Well, um, I've known uh, Chief Reed for a long time. Uh, first, uh, as part of the Clear Creek Education Foundation, we were both board members, and then uh, later got to know him as city manager of Nassau Bay, and then uh, as uh, a Clear Lake Area Chamber of Commerce board members, and then uh, he came on as interim chief when we lost our chief in Kima when I was uh, mayor. And at the time, he wasn't really interested in being our full-time full chief. He had his uh, consulting business, but he did want to help us find a chief. But it, it didn't work out to where we did, so uh, he, we, were finally, we finally talked him into being our full-time chief, and he was just fantastic for our city. So tell me, tell me about some of the reasons why he was a good fit. What, what were some of his first Well, things? what I liked about it was is uh, he really helped unite our city and worked well with the entire staff. Uh, kind of we were a little divided in the city from police to administration and uh, what happened there is is that he comes in and uh, our city administrator and he started in working well with me and uh, and really was a big part of what we call Team Kima. Tell me a little bit about uh, what you shared with me last week about uh, what he did with you know potential drunk drivers and things like that because we're a yeah. little bit different. Well so he was into community policing and worked real hard to make sure that our officers knew the citizens of Kima and everyone uh, would wave and say hi and things like that, which, it, it, you know, Kima's a small town of 2,000. Now, we welcome four million visitors a year, but it, at any rate, but what was nice is, is we have kind of the Sixth Street bar scene, and what he decided to do is rather than have his officers, you know, arrest the guys that are drunk and spend a bunch of time on paperwork he goes let's just all get walkie talkies and let's talk back and forth and if we have a problem person then let's get them an uber ride and send them home and i you know it's just that was the type of person he was uh tell me um tell me what you knew about about him on a personal level you, you said that you met with him a couple of weeks ago um, oh yeah. Lunch with him and stuff, and he he'd just gotten into sailing. Like this was a new. Hobby. Well, it wasn't sailing; it's powerboat. Power but boat. yeah, he, it it's probably been less than six months. I was still mayor when he got his boat, and he was so proud of that. But the other day, uh, we were at a teacher luncheon, and of course, he's on the school board here. So he walks up to my wife Colleen and I, and gives us a big hug, and he goes, "You know, I couldn't do that when you were mayor." But his wife, Jana, was there too, and they were talking about voting, and uh, my wife, Colleen, we've been voting a long time, but she still doesn't feel comfortable as, a, you know, the first mate, and Jana was talking about that also. So anyway, the, the vote was on his mind, and so for him to have the accident, it's just really unfortunate, and the whole thing still just is really unreal. What, what do you think about all this? I mean, it just, it's just such a shock. And well, um, I ran into one of the school board members a while ago, and he's going, you know, if I'd known Chris was such royalty, I might have given him a harder time. But at any rate, yeah, I was just saying, yeah, when I met with him, I didn't know he was royalty, but he was just that type of person. He was contagious. I mean, just positive thinker and always trying to help out. We just lost a real big person in our area.